Hey guys, we are in the middle of nowhere, as you can see, and it's actually 10 to midnight, something like that. Yeah, nearly midnight. And we're off on a bit of an adventure, because <laughs> we're stupid, and we could have done this in the day, <laughs> but we decided to do it at night, just because we can. But the bikes are here. You can see, um, and you can see we're on a bit of a path. Let's put that light a bit better. There we go. And we are off over a mountain range so far on the bikes, and then we're hiking, and you'll see what we're going to find. So we'll be back in a bit. Right, we've come down this path and obviously there's a set of steps here so this is as far as the bikes are going <laughs> for absolutely no chance of anyone finding these bikes here by the way um, we're locking them up anyway there's we got uh, locks around them through the helmets and everything but we are way 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 off the road I don't know how well you can see, probably not too well. There's a big mountain up there. GoPro footage is a bit weird. It's the light to it, I think. It's still bright, I know. Look at I bought this light and it's a bit bright. I've been sat further up this path for quite a while. Seeing this light coming on and off, this hillside right by us. It's been going on for about an hour. We can see it moving around, and I'm quite sure what it is. And there's no camping allowed here, although I guess people would camp to be caught out here, would be a pretty minimal chance of it, to be honest. But we keep seeing this light coming on. where the bikes stop and we carry on on foot we're gonna get our head torches on carry on down the path right we're getting right out into the moors I think it's about 1 a.m. in the morning so it's just fell off my headlight wow I'm falling to bits <laughs> my head torch fell apart <laughs> that's good as you can see we're well prepared not let's turn uh, a big light on there we go there we are I know you can't see too much but it's actually quite a warm night It's a bit boggy underfoot, but not too bad. We're not quite sure how far we've got to walk. I say, this quite easily could have been done in the day, but why not? Why not do it at night? It's a bit more exciting. <laughs> like a pair of kids, sort of thing I used to do when I was a kid. Uh, I don't know how much you can see loads of midgy things flying around us trying to win my ear holes but we have recently seen the light again oh god I'm falling down a hole <laughs> we've recently seen the light again it keeps coming Lee's having a look round now yeah, I see he's right behind me. 
Look. scared. Oh, yeah, he's scared. <laughs> over in that direction, over there into the into the blackness of the night. We keep seeing a light. And I guess we may just find out what that is. We will see. Keep checking the map on my phone, which we can track where we are, so we don't start going too far and get lost. Never find the bikes again. so many insects flying around <laughs> trying to get in your mouth it's my daily exercise blue would have loved it here this is where we come across someone <laughs> in the middle of nowhere right we're an axe Someone's trying to go in my ear hole again. Get off! Right, we've walked a fair way. So I'm just going to go and check my phone again. And see where we are. I can't even see if I'm pointing the camera at me or not. So you'll have to bear with this little rubbish filming. But you should be used to that by now. <laughs> so yeah. Just going to check where we are. Right, we've been walking. You probably can't see much, but we've been walking for quite a while. As you can probably tell, the fat boy's out of puff. <laughs> oh, me, I'm on about. <laughs> and it's proper misty. Definitely silent. And we are getting quite wet. I don't, I don't know if it's rain, it's just because I think we're up in the clouds. Excuse me if I've got water on the GoPro. My hands are soaking, my clothes are soaking. I can't wipe it on anything. Oh. Reckons it can hear water. It looks quite a drop down there, mate. <laughs> See where the edge of this grass ends? It just goes into blackness. Let's get the other torch out. Can you see an end to anything down there? <laughs> no. No, I can't. Oh yeah, that's quite a drop. You probably can't see the end of that torch beam. It seems to be a bit handsome up there. Is that treetops? No, that's got to be a rock face, surely. Yeah, so we don't want to get too close to that edge. That's a hell of a drop. So here we go, back on the trail. I wonder what the time is. Going towards two, half one, two o'clock in the morning. Mm. Oh, it's 20 to one. 20 to one, I thought it was later now, that's not too bad then. It's not still young. That, oh yeah. Don't know if you can see that. No, probably take the edge off your day falling down there. It's only a little narrow track, look, and then you're off the edge. As far as it's not windy, it's normally blowing a gale when you come up these mountains. 
bit of off-roading now, look. <laughs> there you go. I nearly, <laughs> nearly went over. Bang up, and again. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking where I'm going. Look, that's really sensible thing to do when there's a massive drop to the right of me. We're getting a bit drops getting a bit shallower now. I know the light's a bit bright, but I need it on to show you where we've got to. So we've had a bit of a trek. It got a bit rough in places. We did take a couple of wrong turnings and uh, I've managed to fall over in a bog. <laughs> got a bit messed up. But it's proper silent up here. Weirdly peaceful considering where we are. So let me turn around. I'm going to take around everything I can find. That is the remains and it is strewn absolutely everywhere. That's the remains of a B-29 Super Fortress. Crashed here in 1948. 3rd of November if I remember right. As you can see people have been leaving little crosses and poppies of respect. And it's probably hard to get the scale of the wreckage, how far it's strewn everywhere. And I believe over time, people have been helping themselves to part of it, which is a shame. I just spotted these little soldiers, look. Yeah, American flag. This, if you don't know, it was an American aircraft. It was a reconnaissance aircraft. And it was doing a routine flight from Scamp Scampton, I do believe. And as you can see, it didn't make it to its destination. Yeah, it's uh, quite a thing to see, especially at night. You know, we've come a hell of a way from where we parked the bikes. Some of it's quite rough, but it's not bad. It's, you know, some parts you've got to be careful. It's these little drop-offs and stuff, but it was not too bad. I sunk a few times. That's probably down to me being fat, though. But uh, we got here. As you can see, there's still remnants of the tyre there. So this would have been, obviously, the landing gear. And a part of the aircraft, look, it's obviously aluminium and it's all corroding away. Yeah, tyres, obviously, torn to pieces in the crash. And there's parts of the engine over the way there, which we'll go and have a look at in a moment. Someone's put the American flag here, look. It's, uh, it's quite a thing to see. It is. So the, the plane went down. 13 people on board, believed to be all killed instantly. When the, obviously when the plane didn't make it to its destination, it was reported and a search team was scrambled together. And I believe that there was an RAF rescue team doing some training about two miles away. And they directed themselves to here. But uh, it was far too late. Everyone was uh, deceased. The plane was actually carrying the payroll for the base that it was traveling to. 
from what I've researched, seven thousand pounds, and that survived. It survived the inferno and was found still all in bundles in its sack. Obviously, most of the parts are unrecognisable. Obviously, we can tell some parts with the wheel there, with the landing gear. We're going to have a look at the engines in here. There's some of the main structures of the aircraft, I guess, with this framework here with all the holes in. As you can see here. Obviously, a lot of it's aluminium or American aircraft is it aluminum all oh, this is stainless it, it looks so clean you, you you know you should take into account that it's been here since 1948 yeah Let's but the area that the wreckage is drawn across is quite big. Like I say, I, th I think maybe some of the aircraft would have been recovered back at the time. Maybe some of the more important things on the aircraft, they probably would have recovered it. And this is what's left. This is obviously... I guess some sort of radiator cooling by the look of it. But it's just little bits absolutely everywhere. It's so quiet up here. Yeah, you can see the alloys decaying now. Even up here, look, this all looks stainless steel up here. I say, I, I don't know much about aircraft, so it's obviously it's easy with the obvious parts, the landing gear and the engines, which we'll have a look at. This is obviously all part of the main structure by the look of it. Stainless, doesn't it? About two mil thick. All beautifully riveted. Look. It's all stainless. It looks so clean. Right, we've got two engines down here. Let's go and have a look at them. So I believe these, obviously radial engines, double row radial engines, as you can see, I believe they were supercharged. I think the later engines, which I'm not sure if this was one of them, there was had like a turbo charge, but obviously the, the, it, the, the God, I got sorry, I got stuff landing all over me. I don't quite hundred percent know, but the, the, if it was one of the turbo charge ones, the uh, power went in straight into direct drive into the props i think i'll have to look that up do a bit more research on it but it's a hell of a thing obviously the, the pistons are completely welded into the cylinders they got all cooling things on the cylinders as well look. all decaying huge pistons you see i put my hand there look
Yes. Obviously, it hit the ground with some serious force and just obliterated it into thousands of pieces. I think we've got a bit of a memorial plaque up here, which we'll go and have a look at. We've got more engine parts up here by the look of it. Maybe prop shafts. Here's another one of them radiator things, look. You have to see, there's probably some of you um, that's watching this that may know a bit about this type of aircraft and you'll jump in the comments and may recognise parts of it and things like that. I guess that's... What is, could that be some sort of intercooler? I don't know. Please. Obviously the prop's just sheared straight off, look. Unless that's... Ah... Uh, it looks like that's been cut so did someone cut the props off as a some sort of souvenir i don't know or did they shear off just saying that because it looks like there's cut marks in this one yeah one two four props oh, this engine's uh in a bit more complete state, obviously, <laughs> absolute dump for all the working on it. I say, yeah, since 1948. I guess over time, people have been up here and cut parts off. <laughs> Are well and truly stuck. Quite a big lump the engines are. Got a gear in here. I should see them. See them? ring of gears in here. It's a beautiful thing when it was uh, in operation. Nature's certainly taking it back. It's kind of sad that people have uh, Felt the need to take stuff, really. In my opinion, it is. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I wouldn't feel the need to take anything, to be honest. You know, I see the gears in this one. Someone's definitely cut these off. So I guess some people have had the pistons. That's definitely been cut. That's, you can see where they hit it and then sort of changed direction with the cut or just snapped it off, maybe. But yeah, someone's definitely cut through that. What they cut it with, I do not know. I guess that's been done a long, long time. So, unless someone sat here for about an hour trying to go through with an axle, I don't know. It's all weighted there, it's hard to see. It's all four, it's a four, four engine aircraft, so we've got one, two, yeah, all four engines are here. There they are. It's so quiet up here. So quiet. It's a hell of a place, it really is. Get these stupid lights off. It's 
see what the plaque says. There we go. Let's give it a wipe. Let's get me jumper on it. Give it a clean. There we go. You might actually see that writing better in the camera. It's got a lot of shadow with this light. In memory, here lies the wreckage of the B-29 Super Fortress. Well, and the name of the, this aircraft was overexposed, which obviously ties in with the reconnaissance. Let me start that again. Here lies the wreckage of the B-29 Super Fortress overexposed of the 16th Photographic Reconnaissance Squadron. US Air Force, which tragically crashed whilst descending through cloud on the 3rd of November 1948, killing all 13 crew members. The aircraft was on, oh, bear with me, on a routine flight from RES Scampton to American can't see that, AFB Burton Wood. It is doubtful the crew ever saw the ground. Memorial laid by 367. Air navigation. You have to bear with me, so the light's reflecting and causing a lot of shadow, of course. Oh, I can see better down here. Cause RAF. Finally, on the 12th of November 1988. So, yeah, this was put in in 1988. <laughs> Everywhere you look, there's even little parts. It's quite amazing, but it's nice that people have actually left them alone. Lee's, I don't know if you can see the light, Lee's right up there. You probably see his little torch there. He's gone further afield, see if there's anything else up there. It's quite a thing to come round the corner in the path and see it all. It is. You know, after quite a walk for a fat old man. <laughs> but people have laid stones out in different shapes. I've seen stones laid out in crosses. Uh, it's, it's actually quite warm up here, actually. Oh, that's my coat sat there. That's where we've just dropped all our stuff to have a look again big chunk of landing gear here by the look of it that's not part of the main structure all these bolts yeah huge section of the landing gear What, what's front and I'm not sure a bit of pipe yeah long piece of pipe be good to see some drawings of the aircraft wouldn't it to uh, try and identify some of the pieces what they are I'm sure I've seen a big chunk of wing or tail, I'm not sure. Let's go and have a look over down the hill. Yeah, like that. Uh, could be even. Not sure. Is a bit off the side, bit off the wing. Who knows? There's just pieces everywhere. This big strip of it's an alloy, yeah, big strip of alloy. There's pieces all down there. It is everywhere. Someone's done some writing over there in stone.
There it goes all the way down this path, all the way around the corner. Would that be landing gear as well, do you think? Possibly, eh? Huge chunk of metal. Okay, it's be beautifully made, look. The weight of that alone. Obviously completely seized. Oh. Sure, I've seen a big section of wing or something resembling it. Oh, yeah, let's go down here. I reckon this is a bit, bit of the fuselage. Sort of glad I come at night. It uh, gives you a different feel. <laughs> that sounding silly. Don't know. Yeah, I guess that's part of the main body, or is that engine cowlings? I don't know. It's obviously totally destroyed. You can only really make out the engines and the landing gear. So there is pictures of the aircraft when it was obviously in service with the name of it painted on the nose as they often was. Yeah, I wonder if this is a big section of wing block or is it the solid? I don't know. Maybe some of these are Take it upon yourselves to do a bit of investigating. So, yeah, I do some close ups. Probably time stamp the bits you see and maybe let me know what they are. Be interesting to know. It's just a mix of iron, stainless, and alloy. See this part here. They were mainly used for bombers, the bomber aircraft. So, what could that have been? A gun turret? Who knows? It's got a big uh, bracket here, look. All the rivets in there, beautifully done. light up there so we came up from down here from the darkness and this thing here was the first thing we came across let's go and have a look unsure what it is is it part of one of the fuel tanks or something I don't know this is, oh, has that got some sort of rubber matting in there? So yeah, this is full of rubber matting, whatever this is. That's all that black, this is rubber. Yeah, it would be quite interesting. If, you know, uh, some of you guys love to identify things. Oh, look, I'll give it a go as well. There's got to be information somewhere on like individual parts of this aircraft. That looks like it's all stainless. 
on the top is it yeah that's all stainless an alloy down here i'll say with rubber matting could, could that be fuel i don't know it's underneath it who knows all right so yeah it's quite an area it's drawn across it is it's quite a quite a thing to see when you come waltzing around the corner here's Lee up here he's doing his little video You can see the light in the sky over there. It's just a bit of light coming. I don't know what time it is. It is a cloudy night, but it's very, very calm. Considering we've quite high up, we have one section of the walk we did get quite wet. We were walking through clouds or rain or whatever it was. We did get quite wet. Obviously, the sensible ones would walk up in here in the daytime. We decided to do it at night. Like I said earlier, I'm quite glad we did really. It's quite peaceful up here. You can call it peaceful. It was such a violent, savage, barbaric scene. I do believe in the 70s. I think it was the 70s. I have, well, like I say, I've read bits on it. But uh, my, my memory's terrible at retaining information. <laughs> um, a guy found uh, a wedding ring up here. And it turned out to be the pilot's. And uh, it was successfully returned to his family, which was nice. Yeah, let's see if we've got here in rocks. I do believe that says Simon. There we go. Oh yeah. How good my light is. But uh, yeah. It's quite a big area. It really is. Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go and have a quick drink. So we've had quite a walk. And then see what else we can see. Right, just before I go back and get myself a little drink, just spotted the the ram here, the landing gear, which is still remarkably clean. Okay, put my hand by it so you sort of get a gauge how big it is. And I'm just wondering, maybe again, some of you guys would know. If this was sprung in here, or hydraulic, I don't know. I say I, I know nothing about the aircraft at all. We're just waltzing around looking at all the parts. Obviously, huge wheels, huge, so wide. Should look again. Just my hands there for a gauge so you can see the size you probably can't really tell with the camera I don't know it's only getting extremely corroded again obviously this is I guess all part of the undercarriage. I should even walk up here. Look, you know, I, I guess people have picked things up and moved them around over so many years, but there's literally parts everywhere. 
absolutely everywhere. thousands and thousands of rivets any rivet counters out there that can tell me <laughs> how many rivets in a b29 So we, this is where we set up camp, not for the night, just while we're doing this. And obviously here's another section of the landing gear. As that one I just looked at was basically so shiny it was like new. And you look at the difference with this one, it's got a huge bulge in it there and, and splitting. And if the bulge occurred on the impact, quite possibly, it's it's extremely deformed yeah amazing how that one over there still really looks like new now oh, this one's suffered so could have been through heat and the fire i don't know it's, it's certainly got a huge bulge in it yeah So I'm guessing this could be the wing. I'm not doing it without falling over. I don't know, is that the wing or the side of the aircraft? It's very hard to tell. I don't know. Again, maybe some of you guys could see it's looking very much like the structure of a wing isn't it I don't know I could be wrong but anyway I think our little trip is done up this mountain it's certainly been uh, quite a thing to come and see it really has obviously very sad when you think about it but uh, quite an amazing thing to see really and obviously thinking about the poor crew that went down with their plane Anyway, bright light, too bright. We're gonna start our long descent back down the mountain to go and find the bikes. I'll see if I can do it without falling over this time because I fell over and went in a bit of a peat bog. <laughs> you see my, my boots. Yeah. That's quite funny and I didn't have the camera on. Anyway, I'll catch up with you in a bit halfway down the mountain. We're going to make tracks and get back to the bikes. I have no idea if you can see the town or city that's over there in the distance. The little GoPro screen, I can hardly see. Anyway, we've decided to take a different way back. It actually seems better. Because the way up here was a little bit challenging. Like I say, I managed to fall over and sink in some peat bog. <laughs> so I'm a bit uh, muddied up. We're going down a bit of a drop right now. So he lays down there. 
and it's dropping off quite severely actually but we seem to be on a track look we've just come across a few sheep and also as we mentioned earlier because when we was down by the bikes we could see a light that kept sort of moving around up in the hills and we just come across a tent and lit it all <laughs> torches bear in mind it's approaching 3 a.m in the morning so <laughs> probably give them a scare if they woke up <laughs> it's you won't be able to see this on camera but it is proper steep and i know i'm going to end up on my backside so if you all of a sudden see the camera facing to the dark sky you know I've gone <laughs> where are you taking me <laughs> yeah oh we're good we'll get down I say it's about 3 a.m. in the morning. We've got still got a bit of a hike out of the mountains. And then I've got about a hundred mile ride home. We've got to get the bikes turned round on the track because we got so far down the track. And it's quite soft there when you step off the paving that's been laid down. So hopefully we'll turn the bikes around without sinking. Oh. Yeah, that's so oh, we're dropping a fair way. Shame. I mean, the lot's powerful, but uh, the beam's not got much reach. <laughs> <clears throat> I've seen you slip then. How do you think oh, the old the old fart is going to deal with that? <laughs> that ledge. Oh, we're all right. I'm missing sheep dropping. We have RST boot traction. <laughs> oh, no, we ain't. <laughs> <laughs> nearly. I nearly rolled down the hill. <laughs> 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 oh dear hello is that the air ambulance <laughs> my stupid fat friends just disappeared down a big hole <laughs> yeah I said that if, if you disappear leave me to the morning go and have your breakfast come back later <laughs> just bring me Bring me a bottle of milk and a Mars bar. It's like reliving my childhood. When we used to go on all these sort of adventures. Obviously not so much to plane crash sites, but we'll be always doing crazy things. Out at all hours. Yeah, back when you tell your parents, oh I'm sleeping around so and so's house. <laughs> And you'd be off into the woods on an adventure through the night. And your mum will wonder how you got so muddy at your friend's house when you got back home in the morning. Right, this is what you gotta be careful of up here. I've just got a bit a uh, bit more life in me torch. Big hoofing hole in the ground. You probably can't tell, but uh, what's that? Seven, eight foot deep, probably. Easy. Easy. Bit, probably a bit rocky in the bottom. There's a hole just there with all the water streaming out of it. So it shows you how sodden the ground is. And I don't know where it goes after that, but you should come here prepare if you're stupid enough to do it at night like us. You don't want to end up down a big hole like that if you're not paying attention or your torch goes out so always bring backup we've actually got about three or four torches each on us for backup 
Anyway, let's get on with the journey. Just got back to the bikes, all safe, as you can see, or not see, maybe. It is uh, slightly raining. <laughs> wow, what a trip. What a walk that is. I think uh, we went a bit off the beaten track, but it was really good. <sighs> I could do with doing more than that, get into shape a bit. So, I'm going to attempt to turn these bikes around. Then I got about 100 miles to get home. So, I'm guessing it'd be getting light by the time I got home. And then I'm going to sleep. So I've been up 30 hours. <laughs> I ain't been to bed. <laughs> didn't go to bed last night. Anyway, we're going to get packed up, get the jacket on and go. Pop off down the track. Still be a bit slippy. Has it been raining? It was dry when we pulled up here. A hundred miles home. I'm heading straight for the motorway. Oh, the old bat's a little bit. Woo! There we go. It's a little bit bumpy. <laughs> there we go. A bit wet, slightly moist. I've been running round in circles Chasing my tail and lost my way Seeking shelter and if that I hold dear The ones I love 
thought that I would find the answers Drinking till my feet felt numb Just like father did when I was young I don't know how I could be so dumb I've been lost far too long I can't see I'm trapped in darkness Life has turned it Back on me it seems Brother, help me up I've fallen down Have you ever felt like someone who's meant to be somewhere else? Caught inside a state of mind where nothing is really making sense That's why I've been left here on the ground Sister, help me up, I'm falling I've been lost far too long I can't see I'm trapped in darkness Life has turned it Back on me it would seem Brother, help me up I've fallen down I've fallen down